Welcome back. Welcome back. Today, I want to give you a communication hack that you can use not only with your intimate partner, your children, your friends, and etc. Many times when we're at work, that's when we offer our best communication skills and we're able to be assertive. But after a long day, we get home, it's easy to become more passive and passive aggressive. And so here is a tool called the five points of communication or five finger points that I want to share with you that will create a emotionally safe environment, not just for you, but for others. And so the first two points, what I want you to do is ask how, well actually ask rather two emotions you felt today and why. And I would encourage you to ask the person to share a challenging emotion and uh, either a happy moment or silver lining or a moment of relief. Especially during a work day, you can have so many ups and downs, especially with kids on a school day. This will kind of give a perspective. So those are the first two points. The next two points is to share a compliment. It doesn't always have to be external. It can be, you know, I really appreciated how you took the trash out the other day, or I really appreciated how kind you were and you helped me when I didn't really ask for help. You offered to help me. And so this is great for building up your relationships because sometimes it's easy to focus on what's going wrong. What's the problem we have to fix? But we don't really see the silver linings and how you're working together well. This is also great for children because this boosts their confidence, right? Not just externally, which you could do every now and then. Like, those shoes are really good. I like how you put your outfit. But telling kids, like, wow, you know, um, I really liked how you solved that problem. Like, your problem-solving skills are really improving and so forth is a great confidence booster. Now we have the last point. The last point, what I want you to do is share, share a challenge or ask the other person to share a challenge that they're struggling with. Now the tendency is to try to go into problem solving skills right away, but I want you to pause and really try not to go there unless the other person asks hey do you have any tips or suggestions really try to listen and validate wow that seems challenging that seems hard and then see how that makes you feel because maybe that will bring up some anxiety in you and you may say wow why do I feel so quick to want to solve this issue and on the flip side it may be challenging for you to share your challenge why or your issues because if you're that person that always is the one that people consider strong you're the strong one in your family like myself I'm a therapist I hear other people's issues I help create that space for them. But many times I don't really seek to receive that from others, whether it's, unless it's like my um, own therapist, which if you don't have a mentor or therapist, I would encourage you to do that. You know, we got to break that stigma in regards to mental health or my partner. But I may not necessarily go to my kids and share, you know, I'm having a tough day um, as often as I can. And so this allow our children to say, wow, you're human too, and you can have hard moments. And guess what? They can create that space. And of course, you have to be mindful if it's a really um, adult situation and the kids are small, you may not want to go into details and have them worry. And so a lot of factors come into play. But if you do this on a daily basis, what you're going to find is that any incidents of aggressive or passive 
or passive aggressive communication styles will automatically decrease. Many times as mental health professionals, we tell and try to encourage our clients to be more assertive and, and they're like, okay, but how? And so this is a hack to prevent. And you know, I don't know about you, but prevention I believe is 80% of the work when it comes to mental health. And so I want you to try this and I want you to let me know in the comments if you tried it, how did it go? And be consistent, okay? Um, this is a process and don't be encouraged if you tried it and perhaps you got <laughs> really hardly any response. For those who have teens, preteens, tweens, okay, because my oldest son, when I tried this with him, he was like, I'm not feeling anything. <laughs> mm, how was your day? It was good. And he, did, you know, it, it, it was just like really short answers and that's okay continue to create that space and guess what you're not just asking the other person these questions it's a give and take you're also sharing two emotions you felt and why and so forth okay and this is healthy communication is a reciprocation many times we have relationships that are lopsided you know who you are, Ukone, for all my souls out there, where one person is either holding the weight emotionally, 80% of the weight, and that is not a healthy relationship. And many times we say, okay, well, if I'm that person that's holding the weight, what can I do about it? This is a great tool for you. Okay, and do know that... Um, we are agents of change. And sometimes if you're that person that's holding the weight, you have to pull back a little bit. And that can be scary because then you feel like everything is going to fall apart. But sometimes things have to get a little worse before it gets better. So if that's you, journal about it, seek support. If you enjoyed this video and this was helpful, you already know what to do. Give me a thumbs up subscribe and definitely share that video this video with someone else so those are my three points of engagement oh lastly comment all right and so i'm also on the instagram under underscore jenny gaston if you want to follow me there as always much love